I told you. I told you. Is it analytics? <laughs> no, don't go down no, 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 this road I'm saying, again, dude. Wait a minute. Let I'm not worried about Del Moore. He's one of those idiots who believe in analytics. So that's why analytics, analytics don't analytics. work. That's, well, that's, that's why analytics don't work. No, and analytics don't, no, don't work at all. It's yeah, just a crap to some people who were really smart made up to try to get the game because they had no talent. So anybody that actually hoops spends hours working on their basketball skills, like the handles, hezzy, everything, like any basketball skills, spending hours on Instagram watching trainers and learning new moves. But none of that compares to the breakdown of what's a good shot, what's a bad shot. So why not just spend a couple minutes to understand the math behind basketball? Let's go. Basketball's finale for the NBA title. Basketball has constantly changed, but it's about to enter a brave new world where data could be courtside in the hands of coaches, helping to swing a game as it happens. The number of attempted three-point shots has increased every year for the past decade. Let's do points per shot. The average NBA two-point percentage is around 52% year by year, and the average NBA three-pointer is around 36%. Corner threes is around 39%. And NBA foul shooting is around 76% year by year. Some years it can vary between 1-2%, to but eventually it all comes back down to around these numbers. Analytics are like when you're black and See, white. Please! Like when you're black, they call you a cook. When you're white, they call you a chef. They just call it analytics, they can charge you more for it. The idea of you being closer to the rim means the higher chance of a ball going in is not always true. Bruh. I always thought this was true growing up, but it's actually not. I always thought like coaches always drill this into your mind, get closer to the rim, it's a higher percentage shot. But in reality, it's not. If you actually keep track of your shooting percentages over a big sample size, you'll see that it's not always true. And decreases with range. But the three-point line provides an extra reward to go along with the greater risk. Points per shot measures the expected outcome of each shot by calculating the field goal percentage times the points awarded. The numbers show that the best way to score is close to the basket from three or by getting to the foul line. And teams are noticing, with three-point shots skyrocketing and mid-range shots dropping. The chess match of teams trying to maximize efficient shots through new strategies is just beginning. Having skilled players, even if they're a little smaller, is more important than having bigger guys who are, are less skilled. Layups, free throws, and open threes. The average NBA possession last year yielded 1.1 points, but the average open three was converted at 38.5%. And at three points per make, these shots are worth about 1.15 points per attempt. Open threes are good. Layups are even better. Players made 63% of their shots at the rim in 2019, which yields about a point and a quarter per attempt on average. And free throws are hyper efficient. The average NBA player shoots 77% from the line, so a two shot foul is typically worth about 1.5 points. The idea behind Mori Ball is that a steady diet of these attempts produces efficient offense, and in a vacuum, that's true. Adopting these strategies is part of the reason why league-wide scoring efficiency has jumped to record levels in the last few seasons. This might seem little on a small sample size, 0.8 compared to 1.08 points, but if you do it over an entire game of 48 minutes, where there's over 100 possessions in the game, it matters. In basketball, the best way to win is to maximize each offensive possession versus trying to attain as many possessions as possible. The purpose of this stat is used to control the number of opportunities teams had to score. So if we take a closer look at the Pelicans and Celtics offense, the Pelicans played at the second highest pace of 106.3 versus the Celtics who were 16th in pace. This means that the Pelicans had more offensive possessions to work with than the Celtics, but they didn't maximize it as well as Boston did. This is a huge reason why teams start to realize that mid-range were a bad shot in basketball. So that's why the number of three-point shots have gone up dramatically in recent years. Kobe Bryant was. And I knew, as a defender trying to stop him, Kobe's worst case scenario and my best case scenario was to make him shoot a pull-up jumper going to his left hand. The average possession of the Los Angeles Lakers in uh, 2008 was uh, generated 0.98 points per possession. 0.98, so you take the average 
possession of the Lakers, they were going to score 0.98 points every time they had a possession. Kobe Bryant only shot the left-handed pull-up jumper at a 44% clip. So every time that he went left and shot that pull-up jumper, he was generating 0.88 points per possession. Well, that's a tenth of a point less than the average Laker possession. And so if I could make him do that time and time again, which is a lot tougher to, to do than to say, and the way you have to look at it is all these tenths of points, all right, add up. They add up here, they add up here, add up there. And all of a sudden those tenths of a points become points. And in the NBA, as we all know, uh, the margin between wins and losses is very, very thin. So those tenths of points matter. Defenses love long twos. They are generally the least efficient shots in basketball. A strong shooter can make a 23-foot two-pointer around 40% of the time. That's almost identical in distance to a three-point shot, but the three-point shot is worth 50% more. Towing the line in basketball is like trading $1.20 for 80 cents. With minimal effort, shooters can grab a better exchange rate on their long shots by making it a three. This same principle holds true as we inch closer to the hoop. A 22-foot shot might be worth 70 cents on the dollar, but again, we can get the full exchange rate by stepping back behind the three-point line with only a small amount of effort. The game's best mid-range shooter this year, Kevin Durant, took 367 shots from around that foul line and elbow extended area and he made 55% of them, good for 1.1 points per attempt, almost as valuable as the average open three-pointer. A wide open mid-range jumper is never going to reach the heights of an offense built around video game three-point shooting. I know what you're thinking, why don't you just work a mid-range game? But no, the likes of Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, I can keep going through a list of players, but they don't even shoot over 50% for mid-range. Go outside right now and shoot 102 point mid-range shots. And then afterwards shoot 103 point shots. And then count out how many points you score after 100 shots. I'm going to guess most times if you shoot 100 shots from the three point line, even though if you're not even a elite three point shooter, you're going to have more points than shooting 100 mid-range shots. You know what I'm saying? So if each point equals to, if each mid-range shot equals two points and each three-point shot equals three points, tally it up at the end. The only time you should actually take a mid-range, in my opinion, is when you actually just need one bucket to get the win. Eight to shoot. McCollum drive. Push back jumper. It's good. CJ McCollum with 37. Threes also provide more spacing and more chance for a long offensive rebound compared to a mid-range. There's more to basketball than just scoring efficiency, like rebounds, turnovers, and other factors. But in terms of shot selection, it doesn't make sense to take a mid-range jump shot when you can take a three. 